The Silk Road was an ancient and legendary road that brought wealth for centuries between the East and West. Now, as China enters the world stage, one of its primary missions is to bring that source of wealth back. Spanning multiple oceans and continents, China's new Silk Road is a colossal effort that promises global supremacy. But in order to truly understand the potential of a new Silk Road, we need to go back in time. In 130 BCE, Emperor Shu of the Han Dynasty ruled over vast parts of what we know today as Eastern China. Shu, facing mounting threats from the north, wanted a solution that would quickly get rid of the invasions and also expand his empire at the same time. Rather than push north, he decided to expand west. Shu's decision to expand the Han Dynasty westwards set the foundation for a trade route between China and Europe. And eventually, a road would stretch from the city of Xi'an in the east to the north coast of the Mediterranean Sea. For 2,500 years, the route dominated global trade. Legendary explorers like Marco Polo took that road from Italy to China, bringing things like horses and honey eastwards. And in return, Europe received gunpowder, paper, and most importantly, silk for the first time, which then lent its name to the road ever after. In fact, it was not until the Portuguese discovered a sea route between Europe and Asia that could bypass the Silk Road entirely that an alternative existed. However, within the century, sea travel to the Far East would then overtake the Silk Road. And by the mid-1400s, China's lucrative trading path faded from existence. Until now. In 2013, Chinese President Xi Jinping announced that he was going to revive that ancient Silk Road. At first, it was a hard concept to grasp. He called it the One Belt, One Road project. But as it slowly unfolded over the next few years and billions of dollars flowed out of China and into the hands of capital-hungry developing countries, it became clear what it was really meant to be. It was a colossal design that aimed to put China front and center on the world stage. The Belt and Road Initiative, as it's now renamed, started with three roads. The first over land, reviving that ancient road to Rome. The second, over sea, linked China to the Mediterranean through the Indian Ocean. The third, through the internet, called the Digital Silk Road, that linked countries already signed on to the first two routes, but taking that relationship with partnerships for things like telecommunications and digital payments to the next level. But the Grand Chinese Project quickly ran into a massive roadblock led by its number one economic rival, the United States. As China handed out trillions of dollars in seemingly no strings attached loans, they were in fact high interest or conditional offers, which many of the countries found difficult to repay. This created a unique situation where the Chinese could easily seize collateral from these countries to recoup their investments. That's exactly what happened in Sri Lanka. The Chinese took control of a strategic port called Hambantota, which then set off alarm bells in DC. China uses so-called debt diplomacy to expand its influence. Today, that country is offering hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructure loans, yet the terms of those loans are opaque at best. Just ask Sri Lanka. That rhetoric has been intensifying with the Chinese now deciding to add a fourth road to the Belt and Road Initiative, a polar silk road. In January 2018, President Xi announced that China was going to develop new shipping routes in the Arctic. It was going to team up with Russia to develop energy and infrastructure projects in the Arctic Circle. But by this time, DC had heard enough. The Silk Road's leviathan-like nature and larger-than-life ambitions were becoming a threat to America. Being attempts to develop critical infrastructure using Chinese money, Chinese companies, and Chinese workers, our Pentagon warned just last week that China could use its civilian research presence in the Arctic to strengthen its military presence. We need to examine these activities closely. But as China threatens the global world order, becoming a major adversary to the United States, and challenging its hegemony with its visionary plan with the new Silk Road, it also has to weather another storm that has hit its shores. 
Trump's trade war. We're breaking barriers. We're making.